Let's get on to main topic number one. And our first main topic today gets submitted to us by Storm Johnson, who writes, I saw that the DC fandom, interesting name, guest list was released a couple of days ago, and I noticed that Ezra Miller's name was unsurprisingly on the list. However, what is surprising to me is that there has still been absolutely no word from both Ezra or Warner Brothers regarding the infamous video released a few months ago of him choking a female fan to the ground, which was confirmed to be real by Variety. Do you think Warner Brothers is hoping that fans will just forget this behavior or his behavior? And do you think fans should? All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in, man. And yeah, listen, there there is no doubt that this whole thing about Ezra Miller has kind of become an issue. And, and it's certainly an issue for somebody like me. And, and I'll go into why it is an issue for somebody like me. When you look at the Ezra Miller situation, you can't just look at it in a vacuum. Now, what I'm going to say here first is for those of you who are regular viewers of the show, you've heard me say this before, but I'm, I got to say it all again to kind of set up what my kind of thoughts are about Ezra Miller being at DC fandom and why that might not, not actually be that bad of a thing. It might actually be a pretty good thing. And we'll get to that in, in just a second. So Let's talk about this for a second. Let's set the context of this and, and why it is a problem for some people, uh, including me to a degree. So let's remember the history of this. On April 5th, Ezra Miller gets caught on video physically choking a girl and taking her to the ground. Now, Rob, you remember this. When the first day that that came out, I was like, oh, come on, guys. This is clearly a joke. It's clearly a joke. Oh, then all the reports came. No, it wasn't a joke. There was actually an altercation and he actually did take a girl to the ground and that kind of changed the thing of it. Fast forward now just a couple of months. On June 8th, old tweets from the Flash co-star Hartley Sawyer resurfaced about tw tweets he had put out five, seven, eight years ago, whatever. So we have two stars of two different Warner Brothers properties in a, let's say, compromising situations. What was the result of the Hartley Sawyer situation of old tweets resurfacing? He was instantly fired, right? Instantly fired. Uh, castmates uh, quickly came out to condemn him. Um, he was instantly shuttered away, gone, even though he apologized. And, and th that's fine. And listen. I have no problem that Warner Brothers decided to fire him. We've covered this ground before, right? I, I would have been cool with it if they addressed the situation and they worked with him and they kept him on. I have no problem with it that they decided for their company, this is not consistent with our values as a company, and they decided to part ways with him. However they decided to manage that, I was generally okay with. It would have been nice to see them take a little bit more of an understanding because I'm not defending the stuff he tweeted in any regard. He, what he tweeted was really stupid. But I also, it would have been nice to see him say, hey, we address this. We're going to take some disciplinary action. We're going to get him some help to talk about, you know, anger management or how he deals with things like this. But we're going to move forward with him. We don't feel this is fireable. But they did. And fine, that, that was their choice. I have no problem with it. I have no problem with any way they would have gone. What is a little bit concerning, though, is when you look at the contrast in the results of the Ezra Miller situation. Caught on video, physically choking a woman and taking her to the ground. In the result of tweets, it resulted in instantly fired. In the result of... Ezra Miller, the result was nothing. The result was silence. That was the result. Now, I am not saying that Warner Brothers should have fired Ezra Miller. I'm not saying they should have done this or done that or done whatever. Whatever they kind of wanted to do is fine. Where I get concerned is when you see a massive contrast between the result of a guy on camera one of your big stars out at a nightclub during a pandemic 
not being able to restrain himself and having a female fan who's laughing at him, choking her and taking her to ground versus a guy who wrote some tweets about five to six, seven years ago and he got instantly fired. I just thought there was a hypocrisy and a, at, at, at best an inconsistency. I thought at best there was an inconsistency in those situations. Now, you guys have heard me talk about that before. I've already gone in depth about that, so we don't need to go into that any further. But that's setting the stage. So now we come to DC Fandom coming out, and they have Ezra Miller is going to be there. I've had a number of you guys write to me really concerned about this, saying, how are they, why are they bringing Ezra Miller in? The guy just, you know, he, he choked on him. They didn't do anything about it. They're still not addressing it. They're playing ignorant. They're sticking their heads in the sand. They just hope that it just goes away, blah, blah, while they fired another guy for tweets. And yeah, that does look a little concerning. But Rob, I want to suggest that this might actually be a really good thing for Warner Brothers, for Ezra Miller, and for the fans. Because when you look at this situation, look who else is not going to be at DC Fandom. Jason Momoa is not going to be there, right? You've got, I believe, uh, obviously we talked about the Henry Cavill thing, although we think he will be there, but officially he's not going to be there. Ben Affleck isn't going to be there. I mean, a lot of big names. So think of it this way. Warner Brothers could have easily not had Ezra Miller on there and it wouldn't have looked suspicious at all because other big names aren't there and he's not there. They could have just gone shh and quietly continued to sweep the Ezra Miller thing under the rug, right? But they didn't. They've got him coming, even though they had a very easy built-in excuse. Hey, other stars aren't going to be there, neither, neither there's Ezra. No big deal, right? But they have him going. Rob, I'm not saying this is what's going to happen. Okay, let me be clear. I'm not saying this is likely. I'm not saying this is what's going to happen. But I think it might suggest something really smart. Having Ezra Miller there when they didn't need to have him there, could this point the fact that maybe at DC Fandom, Warner Brothers is going to use the platform of DC Fandom to address the Ezra Miller situation? Like, imagine if they have, they're at DC Fandom and they say, hey, and Ezra Miller comes out and one of the first things he says is, look, guys, I need to address something that happened a few months ago. A few months ago, I did something that I am obviously not proud of and is inconsistent with who I am as a person. And I have... Uh, talked with the, the other person involved in it. Hell, imagine they bring out that girl. Imagine that that woman comes out too and says, we have talked this through. You know, it was a bad situation. We've we've made amends and we're all good, blah, blah, blah. And Warner Brothers comes out and says, yes, we instantly talked with, with Ezra. We decided to keep it behind closed doors, but we wanted to come out and address this here and say, we did take this seriously, but we have addressed it, blah, blah, blah. Listen, if Warner Brothers, and again, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen to DC Fandom. But if it does, I will be hella impressed because Warner Brothers could have easily very quietly just put out like a little press release, just, just a little press release, maybe during a day something else big was happening. So maybe it gets buried. Say, yes, we acknowledge what happened with Ezra Miller and we, uh, we strongly condemn what he did, but we're working. But if they choose instead to use a big platform like DC Fandom and say, hey, listen, have Ezra come out and say, before we talk about the upcoming Flash movie, which I'm so excited about. I feel like I really wanted to come out here and address this and say, I apologize. It's not in my character, blah, blah. Again, Rob, I am clearly not saying this is what they're going to do. I'm not even saying I'm expecting it's what they're going to do. But having him there when they clearly didn't have to because other big names are going to be there. Maybe this is them really taking ownership of this and, and making a big positive step. I think it would be very, very smart on Ezra Miller's part. I think it'd be smart on Warner Brothers' part. And I think it'd be really good for the fans to see some consistency with how Warner Brothers is dealing with situations. That's just me. Rob, you see this whole situation. What is your take on it and what do you think is going to happen here? Well, first, I mean, obviously, yes, we've heard that the situation was, in fact, real in some way, shape or form. But the fact that it, it was sort of addressed and that's all we heard about it, maybe maybe there's just as far as social media is concerned, there's details that we never knew that Warner Brothers, after investigating, it was satisfied that, look, this wasn't the kind of this wasn't this wasn't I don't know. Something was different than it appeared on social media. We, we, I, we don't know. 
Uh, second of all, you know, this idea that one mistake, no matter what that might be, I mean, obviously Ezra Miller was in a public situation. It was a public forum. It, it wasn't behind closed doors. I mean, it was out there. Whatever was going on was clearly something crazy and wrong. But um, again, I just don't think we necessarily have all the details or whatever. And I also think that why, why we want to get rid or destroy a, someone's career over one transgression of something, and then we don't even have all the facts, we don't know what's going on, but yet social media will try and convict and execute uh, people for one video clip or one, uh, you know, I don't know, it's crazy. So perhaps um, people have spent a long time behind closed doors, whether it was Ezra Miller's management, whether it was Ezra Miller himself, whether it was Warner Brothers, there could have been a very long investigation that we don't know anything about. So I think, you know, you might be right that by having him come on here, he can address this situation publicly after everybody is satisfied that, they've taken care of it or they've looked at it from every angle and and maybe apologize publicly and explain what happened and where he was coming from uh, because that's the way adults handle things. And I think that's probably what they're going to do. And obviously they're moving forward with the Flash movie, the Snyder Cut, where more of the Flash presumably will be appearing. Um, Ezra Miller is integral to what's going on at Warner Brothers as far as their superhero properties are concerned moving forward. And I think that this is the way to do it. And I guess we'll just wait and see what people think. But I, I'm like, this is how, this is how adults work in the real world. When something happens that's, that's bad, um, whether there's investigations or the law gets involved or something – and then people come forward and either you admit your culpability or – and then you move forward. There's no reason why people should be banished to the phantom zone for the rest of their lives and their careers destroyed. And so I think you're right. I think you're right. I Look, I think that they should. You know, I think that absolutely you can't – this is an elephant in the room that's going to – it's going to be a publicity problem throughout whatever they're going to do with The Flash unless they address it. And I think that would be that, again, the smart adult thing to do is to address this and then put it behind them. And in terms of what I what I really think is uh, the firing that we're talking about is there are always issues du jour. You know, the, the 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 transgressions that are now first and foremost, depending on what they are, racism, sexism, phobias of many different kinds, whatever the issue du jour is. And if, if that issue is the forefront and you transgress against that issue the, the the punishment is harsh severe and and very quick and i think in the case of those tweets that's where we were at i mean look we live in a society where we need to start learning that people make mistakes and if you're going to condemn somebody for something they said or did 10 years ago and not look at them where they're at now you're not allowing anybody to grow and change and mature and learn anything. And that's where we're at. And we're in a really difficult, I think, immature part of our of our uh, evolution as, as people. And it's in this social media era that we are so quick to judge and condemn. And I'm like, how did we become that way? Because all of us, John, have done things in the past that we're not proud of. And I'm just glad social media and people didn't have phones and Twitter and all of that when I was a smaller child because, man, when I was in high school and junior high and even college, I did some really stupid shit. And uh, it just wasn't – it wasn't um, it wasn't recorded for posterity. And I, I just think we, we need to grow up as a society. We need to be able to realize that people, they have to be given time to grow and change, man. Otherwise, what are we going to do? Every one of us is going to wind up in a stockade, condemned. At, um, like a, a lot of people don't realize, and what they don't take consideration to your point is the fact that, you know, the only difference between some of these celebrity people is that the general public doesn't care what's in your social media feed. <laughs> 10 right. years ago, the general public doesn't care what's in my social media feed 10 years ago, because if they were as interested, all the crap they would find on you and the crap they would find on me, uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, it would.
would not be favorable for anybody. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I don't know. Again, I just uh, all I've asked from Warner Brothers or any company for that matter is show a little consistency with how you're going to deal with it. Agreed. That's all. Just show Agreed. some consistency, and and we'll see if DC fandom becomes a, a platform that they choose to exhibit some of that consistency or whether they continue to play the game of let's pretend none of this ever happened. I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. Question is, guys, what do you think is going to happen to DC fan with Ezra Miller? I'm actually suspecting, although I'm not saying put any money on it, I'm suspecting they might use this big platform to address it, in which case I would think that would be pretty damn big of them to do. But I don't know. Maybe not. What do you guys think about it? Jump into the comment section below and let me know your thoughts. All right, guys.